I'm about 17% of the way through Wicked and I finally decided how I wanted to do this vlog. <laughs> I had the idea that I wanted to vlog my Wicked slash Wizard of Oz slash anything potentially future. I wanted to do all that so I could kind of talk about my experience with Oz as a whole from the official works and the unofficial works and that sort of in-between space where I think Wicked falls. <laughs> But I didn't quite know how I wanted to do it, and I don't know installment-wise how I'm going to do it, but for Wicked, I've decided I'm going to go back to my how many shinies can I get before I finish the book, because Wicked is not, like, the best book I've ever read, and I think, even though just sampling, I don't love the narrator, I think I will have more of a fun time making this into a project, and doing the audiobook than I will just forcing myself to read it. So that already kind of says to me I'm probably not going to read the sequels, but we'll see. But what has happened so far is basically nothing. And I wish that was a joke. We spend about 64 pages learning about how Elphaba's mom cheats on her dad a lot. Like, that's it. <laughs> It's also really horny, like more than it needs to be. And for what purpose? I'm not against spice and smut, but this just genuinely feels very random and weird. I'm almost, <laughs> and I say this having not gotten into the meat of the story yet, I am actually surprised currently how successful the musical was when this was its source material because like, what is this? But I just got to the part, we've just switched. I think we're in like part two now. So now I'm in Glinda's perspective. And if you don't know, Glinda, the, what is she? The Witch of the North. She actually in the Wicked lore goes by, or her, her given name is Galinda. And people continually call her Glinda. And I don't, from seeing the show, I don't remember when she personally chooses to go by Glinda versus Galinda, but for now, I will be calling her Galinda. And she has just gotten to Shiz University, has just found out Elphaba will be her roommate. And that was the end of a chapter, so I paused. <laughs> As for Elphaba, all I really know is that she was born green and with teeth, which is alarming. And no one seems to question the fact that this baby was born with teeth. Perhaps the green outweighs that. And she was very unloved by her family. And it was very clear that her mom had no interest in the life that she was living, made all the worse by having a green child who didn't want to speak and was very, I hesitate to use the word melancholy, but she did seem to be quite interested in um, biting. <laughs> I guess like she really enjoyed biting in a way that seems atypical for like she would like bite herself and there was a traveling like glass blower who ends up hanging out with him for a long time and I'm under the impression he is the father of the Wicked Witch of the East aka Nessa Rose that is currently unconfirmed other than the mom is pregnant and we don't know who the father is and it could either be um her dad or this traveler. It's also, if I'm remembering Wicked correctly, I believe, Gal um, not Galinda, <laughs> I believe Elphaba was also fathered by not her dad. You know what, <laughs> the mom had an affair. And I guess I should also back up even more. If you are also unaware of anything Wicked related, Elphaba is the name of the Wicked Witch of the West per Gregory Meyer. As far as I know, L. Frank Baum never named the Wicked Witch of the West. That's all she was. But what's cute is Gregory Meyer, when he made the story, he named her Elphaba because it is the, what is it? The phonetic sound of LFB for L. Frank Baum. So he named her Elphaba as like a nod to L. Frank Baum. And I think that's really cool. So I'm actually quite excited to see the story actually begin because I feel like the first Basically, the first 20% is almost entirely pointless because most of what I've learned so far could have easily been quick little, like, backstories. Hi, Nugget. Is this helping? Great. 
So what I'm going to do now is I am going to exclusively shiny hunt for pink and green Pokemon. I have a list of Pokemon that are, have pink shinies, that have green shinies, and a sm very small list of the shinies that contain pink and green. And my first one <laughs> is going to be on my 3DS, which I have, I'm sitting on the cord, which I have queued up right here. So I can't actually record like any footage of me getting the shinies in the way that I do with my Nintendo Switch because this does not have an auto record feature because the first one I wanna shiny hunt is Wismer because I've been obsessed with that Pokemon for a very long time and I've never got the shiny of it. This, now granted, this Pokemon is available on the Switch with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. However, my version of that game is currently living on another Switch <laughs> that I don't currently have access to. So I can't shiny hunt it on the Switch, but it's also easier for me at least to do it on the 3DS. After I find a Wismer, I will check in and or find another shiny, kind of depending on where I'm at with the book. And as for, I think I kind of want to alternate between like pink and green and then a shared one, but we'll kind of see because finding these shinies is going to kind of span multiple games, depending on which game is better for the shiny that I'm looking for. And I have different levels of patience <laughs> with different shiny hunting methods. And I can only, especially if the book doesn't keep my attention, then I will absolutely be relying on the game to keep me in the zone. So we'll see. But I'm excited. I'm going to go find my shiny whisper now. Okay. Let's hope you can see me because I am a mess. I've been, <laughs> I've been curled up on the couch with my pink Squishmallow on my 3DS. I'm going to stop sitting like that though because I can't see myself. So God knows what you can see. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm getting a new couch in like three weeks and I could not be happier. I hate this thing. So I did not expect to find the shiny this fast. It's been <laughs> like three hours since I last talked to you and <laughs> I haven't even been reading for that whole time. So that was really exciting. I weirdly have been looking for the shiny for a long time and the fact that this only took me like maximum two hours max I don't think it took two hours it's kind of funny that I <laughs> never succeeded before although I didn't used to have the patience for shiny hunting in a way that I do now but for the book what's more interesting to me is knowing that I've read this book before I know I didn't finish it but I know I got past the shiz years and <laughs> where I just paused, and it's a really shockingly good stopping point. Um, it's on to a new, I don't want to call it a section, but what's weird about this book is there are, like, this book is broken up in, like, the weirdest of ways. It, I'm trying to, find the, there we go. So there's all these locations Munchkin Landers, well, Munchkin Landers, I guess is a term. Gillikin, City of Emeralds, and the Vincus. So there's all of those, which I would say are the sections. And then within the sections, <laughs> there are um, subsections. And then each subsection is a chapter number. So like Galinda has multiple chapters, then Bach has multiple chapters, and I've just now gotten to the charmed circle I'm doing this. can this even be seen nobody knows and I just finished box Gillikin chapter and now I'm moving on to the charm circle and where box chapter ends is quite a cliffhanger that I don't remember ever reading which tells me how much I did not care about this book when I read it and I don't I actually don't even know if the stage show does this and I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not doing spoilers on this because I don't know what's going to be a spoiler for the movie and I cannot confidently say what would be a spoiler for the musical right now. <laughs> Anything that I think is about the Wizard of Oz because the musical delves into that part. I assume the book does too. 
But things that are kind of Wizard of Oz adjacent, I will be more apt to talk about just because I feel like that doesn't really have spoilers anymore. And there's not really a plot twist in that movie. Unless you count the part where it's like all a dream. Um, but then like <laughs> even in the Wizard of Oz, Oz exists. So was it all a dream? So yeah, um, we've gotten through Galinda and Elphaba's first year of school. They are rooming together. Galinda seems to have softened already a little bit. She's a bit ditzy. She's a bit, she's more than a bit uh, materialistic and a social climber. Whereas Elphaba is there to study and like just better her life. She's obviously aware that she's super different. But we run into Bach, who is immediately smitten with Elphaba. Nope totally wrong immediately spent with Galinda and basically becomes best friends with um Elphaba as a means of getting in with Galinda even though Galinda doesn't even like Elphaba that much so right now we're just kind of watching their friendships play out them kind of growing in school we're not learning a ton about school the biggest thing right now is that the animal rights and that's animal with a capital A think the Cowardly Lion, he would be considered an animal with a capital A versus like, oh gosh, um, what non-sentient animals are even in the Wizard of Oz? Are there crows? Because like the scarecrow, there must be crows, right? So like there's actual animals and then there's sentient animals and sentient animals have a capital A and their rights are currently at stake. And that's been a big plot. One of their professors, Dr. Delamond, who is being voiced by Peter Dinklage. So excited for that casting. He is a goat and he is one of their best professors and he is trying to um, work to get the Wizard of Oz to change his mind. Meanwhile, Madame Morrible, who I'm not entirely sure what her position at the school is, she doesn't seem to care about animal rights. So I suspect that that will be a long-term political plot for this book, maybe even the series. The show, the musical, <laughs> definitely talks about it. And the song, Something Bad, is coming to mind. However, okay, wow, all right, that just clicked something in my brain. The book talks about if animals gain sentience, is it possible to remove that sentience? And in my head, I think that's where the musical goes. In the book, I'm not sure. Did I just say I wasn't going to spoil the show and then just spoil the show? Stormy, who am I? Anyway, I'm actually getting quite invested and I want to keep shiny hunting and I kind of want to read this with my eyes. So we'll see what we do. Um, it's currently like six o'clock and I've been trying to watch a scary movie every day. Scary movie is a strong term. I mean, I am watching some scary movies, but like I'm thriller, mystery, horror, things that are Halloween adjacent. Like that's really what I'm going for. And I'm way behind. I'm like four days behind. I kept getting busy. But tonight, what did I have? Oh no, I wanted to watch The Invitation again. That's what it was. I love that movie. Is that even what it's called? Because there's a book that reminds me of The Invitation. Regardless, it's this movie if it's not The Invitation. It's this movie even if it is The Invitation. And I will see you guys with another shiny Pokemon Flash update soon. I don't, and by soon, I mean soon to you, not soon to me. <laughs>
Okay, so I finished, I'm almost 50%. And conveniently, I found three shinies and they were all green. And I was only looking for one of them. But Hopip really just decided it needed to show up so many times. <laughs> like I already have too many of that shiny. And <laughs> I was actually really upset at the first one because I was debating if I wanted to even keep it or if I was just gonna reset it when I got my other one. Anyway, I got two shiny Hopips. So I got Hopip, Fomantis, Hopip. And I was looking for Lurantis specifically because that one's green. And it was originally pink and it turns green. So I thought that was like a, like a little special fun one. But I found Fomantis, which is its baby form, which is also green. And I will, I assume I will evolve it. But usually I like to get both shinies before I evolve them so I can do like evolve the better one. That's future me's problem. The point is, I have it. Although, for this challenge, I did technically say I was looking for Lorantis, so that would imply that I should be evolving that. Anyway, so at the almost 50% mark, I want to say I finished the Shiz years, and I feel like I have gotten past all this before. Not because this particular image stands out to me. It does a little bit, but it's making me think that I remember Elphaba's time a little bit in the city of Emeralds, Emerald City. <laughs> that seems familiar to me. And it's interesting that I just, I remember nothing. Like I've read, probably half of this book before and I have no memories literally zero but I'm not totally shocked because like it's not that good like if this was not based on the Wizard of Oz this would be a horrible book the reason why am I still listening to these Pokemon chitter in the background what am I doing the reason this book is good at all in my personal opinion is because there is such love and nostalgia for Wizard of Oz and that elevates it. That that to me is why I know anything that's going on. The politics, the world building, none of that is well explained. Like there is an assumption that you are very familiar with Ozian lore in a way that most people are not. And myself included because I haven't actually finished and or started the Wizard of Oz series yet. Like I've read the first one, but it was ages ago, like I was a teenager. So this relies too much on you having read something, ooh, look, reflection, that people may or may not have read. They're probably more likely familiar with the movie. And this doesn't, I don't think, does enough to fill in the lore gaps for you. So I spent a lot of time just being like, I don't know what any of these words are or what any of it means. And I don't really care. <laughs> but I was right that Alphaba is very much planning to um, help fight for animal with a capital A rights. And she, where we've left off, her and Glinda, we did find out when and why Glinda has gone from Galinda to Glinda. That part has happened and I will not explain further. They've just separated and there was a line in here about how um, Elphaba and her group of friends, like that was the last time they were gonna see each other. I think for a while, I don't think forever. And I would like more about that. And again, I've said this before, but the book is like weirdly horny in a way that just doesn't need to happen. <laughs> There's just, there's, no one's actually even had sex yet. And they're, it's still horny. It's weird. Um, things I did like, um, Nessa Rose, who if I haven't already said, is the Wicked Witch of the East. She received her iconic pair of shoes already. And I really liked how Gregory Maguire handled that since in the original stories they're silver and in the movie they're red by saying, 
like making some kind of comment like, oh, were those shoes silver? Were they red? Were they, I think he even threw blue in there. And they're like, oh, like it doesn't matter. They're shining and they're beautiful. And like, just because they're, the idea was like the way they were reflecting the light, it was hard to tell exactly what color they were. So I liked that, that it was, I think he probably wrote this with this idea that it had a chance of getting optioned. I cannot imagine he predicted the musical, but I like this and it was like, okay, you can kind of use whichever shoes you think um, feed the story, you know? And I like that, I thought that was fun. And there was, there was a line, what was it? Oh, I think Elphaba, was it Elphaba? Now I'm questioning it because I know she says it in The Wizard of Oz, but she refers to someone as her pretties, but like affectionately and it was cute. And I was just like, oh, I see what you did there. And so that was fun. I really, I have enjoyed getting, I like that this is kind of an ensemble cast. Like you're getting Elphaba, you're getting Glinda, you're getting Bok, who is um, one of their classmates. I don't know if I've mentioned him yet, but he, he's obsessed with Glinda. He really wants to date her. But then like throughout the first year, they, he becomes such good friends with Elphaba and Glinda that he actually is just kind of like, oh, like I'm glad we're friends. Like he stops being his obsession with her is weird and too much but he does eventually calm down so I liked that and this someone people have said like this book is hornier and darker like way darker than the show and it definitely is because I'm getting vague recollections because I haven't seen the musical since 2007 and I'm getting some recollections of what I remember and there's a plot line in here that is significantly changed <laughs> so far in the stage show. And obviously I expect 99% of this to not be in the stage show. And I think most of what's gonna get added to the movie is like the friendship stuff. Like I don't think they're gonna pull new plot lines from this half of the book. Oh, there's our reader group guide. That's gonna be fun because this is a book club book. Spoilers, it was not fun. We didn't even discuss the book at book club because I was the only one who finished it and everyone who even started it hated it because it was bad. We just watched The Wizard of Oz instead because <laughs> like truly this is spoilers in this moment because I do have a whole rant in like 10 minutes <laughs> from when you're watching this. I hate this book and we did not use the reader guide because it was a bad book. So I think a lot of this, where's my camera? I think a lot of this is gonna get added and not a lot of this, <laughs> if I had to guess. Because I think fleshing out their time at Shiz makes the most sense to add that to the new movie. Anyway, I am hes hesitant to say that I'm enjoying it. Like, <laughs> I can tell you right now, if this was not Wizard of Oz, if I wasn't doing this vlog, I don't know that I would continue and I'm almost positive, unless this just like ends in a way that I have to keep going, I doubt I will read the sequels because I don't like his writing style. And based on some of the reviews of his other books, I think his most recent book has like a 2.8 on Goodreads, which is so unheard of. Like, I don't, I don't know that he's a good writer, but he's got a lot to say. So he's got that going for him. Anyway, um, yeah, so I guess now I should find a pink shiny, right? Because that's kind of the more exciting part of this video for me. <laughs> New location, and I look a mess and highly reflective. How do people with glasses that film survive? Asking for a friend. I'm gonna turn this heater off. So I finished Wicked. I didn't give any more updates because I hate it. Like, I hate it to the point that I, like we're having book club this weekend and I had to reach out to them and apologize for even suggesting this book. This is one of my book club friends 
This is their first foray into Oz at all. They've not seen The Wizard of Oz, they've not read The Wizard of Oz, they've not seen Wicked. And I made them read this. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. It's so bad. Why is it so bad? The concept was good. Um, also, in case you're wondering, I did find one more shiny, but I gave up on this entire project because I hate this book so much. I was hate reading it by the end. <laughs> because what was that, honestly? It was so unnecessarily horny. Like, I'm not a prude. I enjoy a good spicy romance. I enjoy a good well-crafted sex scene. They don't offend me. I'm not mad that they exist. My problem is that I can see my glasses and <laughs> like, there's like no good place for me to avoid a reflection. Um, no, no, all of it's bad. Okay, can I just sit like this the entire time? Probably not. But like Alphaba and you know what? Do I care if I spoil this book? It's so bad. If you care about spoilers, I guess this is the time to leave. I hated it. That's the end of the story. I gave it two stars. Um, but I recommend not reading it, so who cares about spoilers? I have not really mentioned Fierro at this point. He was a classmate of theirs. He's not super relevant to their time at Shiz. Like, that part doesn't really... He's not a huge focus. He's there. But he's mostly just kind of like this weird munchkin lander who... In the stage show, is either not. Wait, is he Munchkin Lander? No. Bach is Munchkin Lander. Fierro. I don't know. He's brown. And that becomes. They're like weirdly racist against him in a way that makes no sense. <laughs> like, because this is all fantasy. You could have just not made them racist, especially when Elphaba's whole thing is like people judge her for being green. Very weird. But anyway, Fierro was married at the age of seven. That's just like a thing we have to live with. And he married into a harem, naturally. So he married his wife and then all of her sisters moved in with him. And I guess they are um, like allowed to sleep with him. I don't think he does, but like that's like a thing that's allowed to happen. They don't have sex until they're adults. I should probably clarify that. They get married at seven, but they don't like live together until they're adults. Which makes, what's the point of the marriage? Whatever. It was dumb. Fiera and Elphaba have an affair. Elphaba may or may not have sired a child. She doesn't know. Because I honestly don't know if it was not well explained or if I had just tuned out by this point, 50-50 shot, that she was basically like out of it for a year. So she's like, I could have given birth. I wouldn't know. Like, What? In the second book, it's called Son of a Witch. It's implying it's her child. I'm never going to read it and find out if we get confirmation. But the idea is Fiero and Elphaba have an affair. She gets pregnant, has this child. But, like, that's not answered. It's not clear. It's stupid. And Fiero dies off page, I think, in Elphaba's house. Um, I missed all of that. What the stage show does is significantly better. I will not spoil that. I really like what the stage show did with Fierro and Bach. That was a much better idea. <laughs> what this book does is stupid and I hate it. And like, okay, so where I was originally going with this, <laughs> this weirdly sexual stuff, like A, that they get married as children is weird. It's not sexual, but it's weird. And Fierro as an adult talking to Elphaba, they're having a conversation that's it. They're not having sex. They're having a conversation. And we're just, like, informed that Fierro is hard. And, like, all of the sex in this book is, like, not sexy. And it's not, like, it's happening on page, but it's not, like, as explicit as a romance. But it's, like, almost clinical. And it's just, it's weird and unnecessary. It adds nothing to the plot. And like, there's like scenes that make no sense, <laughs> or not even scenes, there's like moments where Alphaba's talking to um, an elephant with a capital E and it just starts pissing. 
and like there's a lengthy description of it peeing and for what what does that add absolutely nothing this entire book every time i pause well not the entire book obviously there were moments earlier where i actually kind of liked it but the whole thing, like, and for what? What did this add? What did this bring to the story? Why did you make me read this? Talking to Gregory. And it's just, it's so bad. There's nothing necessary. <laughs> and honestly, I don't even feel like I learned what made Elphaba wicked. Like, truly. Everyone hated her for no reason. The entire book, she's lovely and standing up for animal rights. So like, I get why the wizard hates her and why the wizard wants her dead because she's like a vigilante trying to go against him. Like, I get that, but she's never genuinely wicked. Like in The Wizard of Oz, she's literally trying to murder a child. And you kind of think, okay, well, what's in her backstory that's gonna make that happen? And Wicked the Musical answers that in a satisfying way. The book does not. <laughs> and I wouldn't have needed Wicked the book to answer that question if the answer is what the book gives me. Because if it is essentially people judged her for being green and then just decided she was evil and like, and her sister is also evil. Okay, so I assume she's got a shitty home life, that she's got evil parents. And like, that's like hardly even true. Her parents were neglectful, but they didn't. Like, like what, <laughs> they were concerned. Their child was green and had very sharp teeth. Like that's concerning. But like once she got over that, like they still cared for her enough. Like Elba knew she was the third favorite child, but she wasn't hated. So it's just like, okay, she felt neglect. That doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be like child murdering evil. And the book never really, and, I, and maybe that's a point, like in the book, she's never actually wicked. She's misunderstood. But you barely even give a good reason for why the wizard wants to kill her, why she wants to kill Dorothy. And like, the whole plot of her going after Dorothy is all for Nessa Rose's shoes, which is technically true. Like, Dorothy kills her sister she w and then steals her shoes. Like, of course that makes her mad. Um, that's a good reason, actually, to go after someone. Obviously, Dorothy is a child. <laughs> it was an accident. But, and also Nessa Rose was, like, a huge bitch. But, <laughs> the show makes, like, a good answer out of that and granted yes the second act of wicked is not as strong as the first act the first act of wicked is phenomenal the second act's kind of okay so i'm hoping the movie actually expands on that and makes it a little bit better but the book is like i need my sister's shoes and i'm not even torturing this child like canonically she is torturing dorothy and i i will admit i don't think that wicked actually wicked the musical makes her torture Dorothy either. Like I do think that Wicked the Musical leaves some of that out. But Wicked the Book has no reason to leave that out because you are literally basing it on all of this. So why, 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 why is this so bad? It's like, it's the worst fantasy because it requires you to know too much about Oz and so it doesn't explain enough. So I was lost half the time. I don't even think he cares about his characters. There are five characters whose names are one, two, three, four, five, or I feel like it actually goes up to six. So I don't know if there was, I don't know. Point is their names are numbers because he didn't want to give them names. Like the whole point is like, oh, I'd rather call you by your name instead of one. And they're like, oh, I don't even remember my name. I just go by one. Like what? Do you even like your characters? It was stupid. And it was a ton of politics, but honestly did not feel well explained to me because the first half I was actually paying attention. The second half, anything I missed is on me because I didn't even care at that point. But like the first half I was paying attention and I still didn't understand what was going on. Um, so I hate this book, like a lot. And I almost want to give it one star, but I already gave it two. I usually leave one stars for a DNF, but like 
a DNF that I've read a significant portion of. <laughs> like, I don't usually rate my DNFs, but if I do rate them, they're one star. And I try to reserve that for when I've actually read a significant portion that I feel like I can actually rate it. So to me, a two star is like a book I hated that I finished. So like it is an appropriate rating, but I do kind of want to give it a one star out of spite because the more I think about this book, the more I hate it. It's so bad. But I did find one of my favorite shinies that I've been looking for. So like that was great. I enjoyed the concept of this challenge <laughs> of finding pink and green shinies. And I did. I found five. And they were all pink and green, two of which, three of which were completely by accident. So that, that was fun. I liked that part. That's the only thing I liked. Don't read this book. 